Hello everybody and welcome to the final video in the obtuse triangle trigonometry unit. Uh, today we're going to look at solving triangles. So we're going to use all the skills that we've learned previously in this final topic. Um, let's go over some tools for solving. So these are the things that you can use uh, when you're solving these problems. Well, the first thing I'm going to mention is, well, Sokotoa. What's Sokotoa? Sine, cosine, tangent, right? So whenever there's right triangles, we can use this. So uh, yeah, I'll write this in red. Right triangles. So if we have right triangles involved, we can use Sokotoa. Um, again, with right triangles, Pythagoras. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. And like I said, that again is a right triangle um, technique. We can use just math facts. All the different math facts that you know, like the math facts that you learned regarding triangles and parallel lines and angles in our first chapter in this course. So an example of that. Um, triangles add to 180 degrees. We can use the cosine law, of course, and the sine law. All right, so those are the things that we can use when we're uh, solving these problems. So keep them in mind. Our first example, a cable car takes passengers across a 74 meter wide gorge. At one point in the crossing, the angles of depression of the cable supporting the cable car measure 43 and 37 degrees. Determine the length of the cable to the nearest tenth of a meter. All right, so we got this uh, cable car. That's going to be, you know, it's one of those um, cars that travel along suspended wires and they help you get over, um, you know, treacherous terrain. Um, so at one point, and again, this is 74 meters wide, this gorge. Uh, you're crossing from A to B, I'm going to say. Some point A to point B. But at one point in the cross, and the angles of depression of the cable supporting the cable car. So the weight of the cable car, this would C before the car, that's going to actually bring it down. So this is the actual wire, and this is the wire. All right, and up top there, the 74, that is just a horizontal line. That's horizontal. Okay, so that's the distance. Um, the distance between those two points is 74. And, and you know, when you measure something, you're going to measure in a horizontal uh, fashion. So what else do I know? So I got 74 accounted for. At one point in the cross, in the angles of depression... Okay, so angles of depression, their angles measure down from uh, a horizontal line. So I'm going to measure down from the horizontal line here and down from here. So I, I can just say this one's 43, this one's 37. It doesn't really say uh, what should go where, just that um, those angles are there. Okay, and again, you're measuring down from a horizontal line. Uh, they want to know the length of the cable. So what they're really looking for is for me to find little b and little a, okay? I wrote wire, but the cable, I guess I should have wrote. Uh, we're gonna look for those lengths and add those together. Okay, so before we begin, you know me, I'm gonna organize myself. Angle A is 43, I'm saying. Angle B is 37 degrees. I don't know C, but I could right away. I do know side C. And again, I'm gonna be actually looking for a and B. Okay, so when I look at this, what should I use? Well, it, there, this is not a right triangle, so I'm not going to use um, the sine, cosine, or tangent ratios. I'm not going to use Pythagoras. Um, I am going to use a math fact here right away. Just as I'm looking, I see that I could find angle C quite quickly um, using that property that the angles of a triangle always add to 180 degrees. So I go 180 degrees minus the two angles that I know. And I end up getting 100 because 43 and 37 actually add to 80. So this 
ends up being 100. And when I find that, I know that I can use sine law moving forward because I have this completed row. And as you've discovered, sine law is the quicker of the two laws, so that's a nice thing to, for, uh, to happen for us. Okay, so uh, my second step, I guess I'll find A. To find A, again, I always put the thing I'm looking for top left, and that allows me to use that little shortcut when I'm solving. So A over sine 43 is equal to 74 over sine 100. Then I do my half cross multiplication using my pattern. So I get 74 times sine 43 all over 100. You might find the solving now to be easy. It's just really coming up with the diagram that might be an issue still, and that makes total sense. So um, if that's you, don't worry about it. That's the toughest part is coming up with the diagram. Uh, all right, so now again, make sure your um, calculator is in degrees. When I punch this in and I mess something up there, that should be sine 100. When I punch this in, I'm going to get 51.2 meters. Okay, that is side A, 51.2. My third step, I'm going to look for B. So again, I'm going to put what I'm looking for top left. So B over sine 37. And the nice thing again, we get to use sine, that's quicker. We're also finding the side length. The side length is the quicker of the two things to find when you're dealing with side length. Uh, sorry, when you're dealing with the sine law. Um, and this would be now 74 over sine 100 again. Uh, do my half cross multiplication because I'm taking advantage of that pattern. If you don't remember what I'm talking about when I'm saying that, go back to the uh, sine video from the acute triangle section. This is sine 100. Okay, when I punch that into my calculator, I end up getting uh, 45.2 meters. Okay, so I, I have this triangle solved, but they're actually asking for something specific. They're asking for the total cable length. So the cable length will be equal to the sum of those two sides I found. So 51.2 plus 45.2, 96.4 meters. And that is my final answer. All right, so I didn't know I had to use sign law going into this, um, but based on the information I was given, I had that full row, then that told me use sign law. Okay, so in this example, you're going to notice that we'll have to use our compass directions again, so hopefully you're comfortable with that. Here we go. Two lighthouses, A and B, are 22.8 kilometers apart. From lighthouse A, the compass heading for lighthouse B is south 72 degrees east. Remember, I like to read that backwards, and I'm going to say it's east 72 degrees of the south line. The keeper in each lighthouse sees the same ship. The heading of the ship from lighthouse A is north 46 degrees east, or east 46 degrees off the north line. The heading of the ship from Lighthouse B is north 51 degrees west. How far to the nearest tenth of a kilometer is the ship from each lighthouse? Okay, so let's get rolling here. Um, I know that I have these two lighthouses, A and B. Okay, uh, from Lighthouse A, the compass heading for Lighthouse B is south 72 degrees east so i'm gonna have my north south lines going here okay this is going to be a and it says i am going south 72 degrees east so i'm going to go 72 degrees east off the south line so I'm saying this is 72 degrees right here, okay? And that's going to get me to B. Um, the keeper in each lighthouse sees the same ship, so there's a ship out here too. Um, you know what I can do? Sorry guys, I kind of break my, I might as well put my directional kind of markings here too, just so I don't lose people on that. Anyway, back to that. The keeper in each lighthouse sees the same ship. The heading of the ship from lighthouse A is north 46 degrees east. So I'm going to go 46 degrees off the east, um, 
46 degrees east from that north line. So this is 46 degrees from that line. All right, I'll call that S for a ship. So I've dealt with this guy, I've dealt with that guy. The heading of the ship from Lighthouse B, so from Lighthouse B, is north 51 degrees west. So I'm gonna go from the west side. Now, if you forgot, by the way, this is north, south, east, west. So I'm gonna go in that west direction, 46 degrees west off that north line. So I'm gonna actually, you know, complete my triangle here, first of all. And we're saying that this is 46 degrees. That's 46. Better extend my little dotted line a little bit. So I'm saying that is 46 degrees. All right, now, uh, what else do I know? Oh, I still also know up here that these lighthouses are 22.8 kilometers apart. Now, if that's kind of ugly, by all means, redraw it, okay? And I will redraw it because it might be just look a bit complicated there. This is A, B, S, 22.8. And now I need some more information. So I'm gonna go back to my first drawing, see if I can figure out my messy drawing, then I'll write it nicely in my uh, green drawing there. Um, well, the first thing I know, <clears throat> or I noticed, is angle A. I should know angle A, um, because angle A is made up of these three parts over here. I should use a different color. Let's use green, these three parts. So the angle A that's within the triangle is gonna be equal to 180 degrees minus those two angles I know because those three angles must add up to a straight line. A straight line is 180 degrees. Okay, so that's angle A. And then if I do the math real quick, I get 62 degrees on that. So over here, this turns out to be 62 degrees. Um, other things I've, I've noticed here. Well, something we should talk about is north-south lines and east-west lines. That north-south lines are always parallel to each other. So I can put this little arrowhead and this little arrowhead. That means they're parallel to each other. Same with the east-west lines. I'll put two arrowheads on those just so you know that they're equal to each other as well. Now, why am I talking about that? Because if I have parallel lines, I might have a transversal somewhere. And this line AB acts as a transversal. So which line is that? The line right here, A, B, I'll try to make it a little bit, stand out a little bit more. That ends up being a transversal. And what does that tell me? Um, it tells me that 72 degrees here and this whole angle here are equal. So I know that entire angle is 72 and I know this portion is 46. So if I wanna find the portion that's within the triangle, I have to subtract. So I can go angle B is gonna be 72 minus the 46, because 46 and this other little piece will add up to make that total 72. So that's 21 degrees. Okay, and now I have three pieces of information. So I know I, I kind of have enough information. Um, why don't I write up what I got? Okay, so A is 62, B is 21, and side S ends up being 22.8. Uh, now, if I look at it as is right now, I don't have a row, so I know it's not sine law, so then you're thinking, well, it's gotta be cosine law. But cosine law only uses one angle. So I, for cosine law, you need two sides and an angle. Well, in this one, I have two angles and a side. So actually, none of them, I can't use either of them right now. But Hopefully you've noticed, I should be able to find angle S there really quickly. So angle S is gonna be equal to 180 minus the two angles I know because these three angles have to add to 180 because they're in a triangle. So angle S ends up being 97 degrees. So that's 97, that's 97. Okay, now I have uh, a row, so I'm good to go. Um, what am I actually looking for? I'm looking for the distance from the ship to each lighthouse. So that's gonna be, angle. I'm looking for side A and side B. And I'll move to my next slide to actually do that work. All right, so before I do the work, I just wanna write out my, my setup one more time. I won't redraw the triangle, but just so we have 
this information. Okay, we found all these values already, 62, 21, 97. So I'm just copying st down the stuff that I know from the previous screen, 22.8. And reminder, we're looking for B and we're looking for A. So whichever one you want to do first. I'm a creature of habit, so I'm going to go with the A first. So A over sine 62 equals 22.8 over sine 97. Now um, I get to do my half cross multiplication because I'm taking advantage of that pattern. 22.8 times sine 62 all over sine 97. All right, so you again, make sure you're in degrees, punch that into your calculator, you'll get 20.3 kilometers. All right, question two, I'll end up finding B. So B over sine 21 equals 22.8 over sine 97. Go through everything again. Hopefully the solving isn't the big deal. And by the way, I forgot to mention this. Darn it, I was going to surprise everybody. You might be thinking, hey, you did two sine questions in a row. And yeah, I did it on purpose. I was assuming... You would ever be thinking, well, he did sine law last time. He's going to have to do cosine law this time. No, got you. I'm doing sine law twice in a row. Again, because the solving you don't need to see. So I'm okay not doing a cosine law because you've seen a lot of them. I'm um, just drawing these diagrams and making the choices of what I want to highlight. Anyway, once I plug that into my calculator, I'm going to end up getting 8.2 kilometers. And there we go. These are the distances each ship is from. Or, sorry, these are the distances that the ship is from each individual lighthouse. All right, so that's uh, that's solving triangles. It's really you just come up with a triangle, check out the information. Now in here, um, there wasn't a side side angle question because if there's a side side angle, you got to see if there's ambiguous case, but that could pop up. Um, if you need more help with that, check that last video out. I hope all this stuff made sense. If it didn't, come find a teacher or myself. Have a great night, everybody.